then. There we go. Brilliant. Good. Well, thanks for joining us, guys. And and uh, we had some. The last one of these we did, we had an awful lot of questions about um, asset management. An awful lot, which is brilliant. Really focused questions as well. So I, I'm not sure if we're going to get any um, of the similar types of questions here. We have got one already from from Julie, and um, it, it was during the last uh, during David's session. Uh, but I think this applies to everybody, really, right? She, she asks about a, a little bit more information about the Teams integration. It's been a big deal, isn't it? And we did cover that a little bit earlier, right? So Teams integration capability. So logging a ticket from within Teams and getting feedback as well. So using uh, using Teams as 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 a sort of uh, uh, you know another way to access the the the, the system, and we're going to start in order, right? Just to talk about that. So we'll start with Prem first. Oh, thank you, David. Yeah, the team phenomenon, Teams phenomenon happened, uh, you know, uh, very rapidly during the pandemic situation when everyone had started to work from home. So we started observing a sudden increase in chat as a primary medium for communicating with service desk and within the peers. So we thought like we may have to extend self-service into MS Teams. And uh, fortunately, we were also thinking about integrating collaborative solutions, a lot of productivity and collaborative solutions with management and service desk plus. And uh, you know, very fortunately, we were able to achieve the integration uh, very soon and we observed a huge traction. So we worked closely with Microsoft and we observed the uh, statistics and we were astonished to see that a lot of people were accessing service desks through MS Teams and uh, you know uh, accessing service desk performing operations you know uh, collaborating within the technicians and you know, amongst the resolvers to take decisions for uh, major incidents and problems so uh, we thought of adding more features uh, with the ms teams integration like adaptive cards and we are already uh, in line in developing a lot more features to accommodate ms teams and also other collaborative uh, solutions like slack so the, the traction is there and uh, yeah. fortunate, we were very fortunate to have it uh, integrated with Service Guest Plus. And uh, we are thinking of a lot more areas that can be covered and uh, uh, points of collaboration where it can be applied in different practices. Mm -hmm. uh, say for example, when you take uh, request management, if you want to handle a request, what are the different areas where collaboration can be used? reduce bottlenecks to accelerate the process and we are trying to find out the points where different collaborative mediums can be employed to streamline the process similarly we are analyzing the other areas where it can be other practices in which uh, collaboration uh, as a, a general practice can be implemented mm -hmm. uh, to facilitate working from home and you know moving forward yeah and I, I, it's really interesting isn't it that demand for we, we did some research not so long back, actually, as, as um, of some, some of the work we do, the Sunrise, and some of the figures that came out with that about the adoption of collaboration tools, especially Teams, were, were off the charts, which is incredible. So that drive to integrate with these kinds of things, which, which has been uh, very quickly adopted. Similarly, Tom, wh what about what about the capability with Halo around sort of integrating with Teams and using Teams, uh, you know, holistically across the organization, maybe? Sorry, on me there. <laughs> um, so we've gone heavily on the Teams integration. It's it's a really big part of what we've been working on over the last eighteen months or so. It's something that's really really key to everyone going forward because Teams is something that's it's on everyone's laptop. Everyone's got it in front of them. It's it's where they work. Um, and te a Teams integration isn't just a one thing. It's not just like we integrate with Teams. We we do it all. Teams is massive. It's a big product and realistically it's multiple products in one it doesn't just do one thing so when we talk about teams integration we've we've approached it in basically the functions there's multiple functions that people need to do with teams so we've kind of plotted a roadmap from 18 months ago and we've kind of nearly nearly completed it all um, so just to clarify the things we do with teams um, we allow to call outbound from halo so via teams so you can call your users um, we allow you to uh, schedule meetings and join meetings from within Halo, Teams meetings. Uh, we allow you to send alerts through to Teams channels. So if you've got a major incident, you can start up a channel, send alerts through and have a kind of a set team to uh, manage that within Teams. Um, we allow you to, so this is all the outbound side of things to start with. <laughs> um, 
Then you've got the inbound stuff. So you've got the users that are in Teams. And within there, then there's two separate bots you need in that. So you need one for your agents, uh, which we've got, which allow if an end user was to contact an agent, they could then raise a ticket on their behalf, or they could uh, the user could find an update on that ticket, or they could even follow the ticket to keep up to date with all the latest activities on it. And then there's the conversational bot, which we're about to release in Q1 next year, which is where the user can converse with a bot itself. And it's all the kind of machine learning behind the scenes and um, using the kind of Microsoft bot frameworks for that. And that's where the users interact without the need for any uh, agent. Um, so we're kind of 90% along the whole roadmap um, in terms of that. And then the final thing is the telephony side, which Microsoft keeps changing their APIs and messing around everyone. So. Um, that's the kind of the last one on our roadmap. Interesting. And David, same question to you about that sort of integration capability with Teams. Yeah, yeah, sure. I, I guess I kind of sort of touched on it with a very brief example, so I probably kicked it all off. I didn't really uh, <laughs> uh, have time to expand on it. So, so yeah, I, I mean, absolutely. We, we kind of showed you from Sunrise a simple outbound example, uh, basically calling the Teams API. Um, but in terms of Sunrise, um, we can do both out and and, and inbound. So. Um, Interesting point as well, uh, and again, you know, sometimes vendors don't tell you how they do it, but just making a point for everyone really that um, Teams itself has its own bots. So, you know, arguably you could write complete workflow in Teams, uh, gather all the information, and at the end of that, as long as the uh, uh, the service tool has an API, you just pass that all into the API and create a ticket. So, don't you know? This is to the uh, delegates. Don't necessarily get lost in the, in the technology. Really, not everyone tells you how they do it, but uh, Microsoft allowed you to do an awful lot. But yeah, from a Sunrise point of view, uh, we allow you to have conversations in Teams, whereby you then go to Sunrise and make an incident. Um, we can send information back from Sunrise to Teams. Uh, we can create records. We can create invites. Um, at the highest level, we can. Do anything that the Teams and Microsoft API would allow you to do, which majority of every vendor could give that that same answer. It's, it's very interesting time, isn't it? And I think you know this this stuff that's been driven by what's happened over the last few years and how organisations not only delivering but service organisations and organisations who've got solutions to help other organisations how they react to that. So I've, I've certainly got a question. To, we've heard a, a lot today about the integration capability in in in, in the tools that we've seen. So we've, we've listened to you know the stuff around Azure. Uh, open AI, which is really interesting when you look at sort of um, GPT uh, GPT three and the capability of uh, an MPL and all that stuff. So I'm waiting for that to explode. I think Prem, we saw that you saw you try to test your um, sort of voice. You know, I, I'm I'm waiting for that to to really start to explode at some point. And my question is, how do you? So if you look at an organization, right, they think in a certain way, they're looking for new stuff, they're looking to make things easier. Um, the industry's changing, innovation's happening. So how, what, two questions, I think. What do you think, uh, how do you think organizations should think about the next year, two years, three years, about how they use tools? Because the landscape's changed. So what, 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 they, what would they look in their tooling strategy, right, as key things they need to focus on? Um, and, and from your side, how do you keep up with that? How do you keep up with the need to innovate? Is it is it literally sort of information aggregation? Is it your your customers, or is it some? How, how do you keep up with that? So there's two questions there, and one. And next on the list is Tom. It's your turn, Tom. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers, David. <laughs> um, I'll start with the second. I'll start with the second question because I've forgotten the first one. Um, so how do we keep up with it? Um, we we we're very customer focused we work very very close with our customers so we get a lot of feedback from them and we listen to what they're looking to to deliver and what what kind of channels they're looking to use and what kind of trends they're looking to follow we have to be very very careful as vendors that we don't jump on every single trend that hits the hits the media hits the kind of ecosystem because 90 percent of them go nowhere <laughs> and they're kind of gimmicks and they don't and they're not valuable to anyone they kind of sound really good in practice but in reality they're not very good um, so we have to find a real careful balance between what is here to stay and what's genuinely going to improve the service that everyone's able to deliver and what's just a gimmick that's a, kind of a, a waste of everyone's time. Um, so things like uh, virtual agents, um, they've now crossed that threshold in our eyes. They are now something that's here to stay and providing genuine value. If we'd looked five years ago, it could have easily been something that kind of fell away and because um, there were some terrible ones to start with, weren't there? Um, so in our eyes, we work and we just keep our kind of finger on the pulse of kind of which innovations are worth us kind of pursuing and where we Select, want to take the product. Yeah. 
really interesting because that's what, how you differentiate products. So I, I suppose there's one angle, you're looking at what the, the, co the competitive landscape looks like mm -hmm. and trying to keep up with that. On the other end, on the other side, you're looking to differentiate somehow in, in, in certain areas. It's very, very interesting stuff, uh, guys. The first question was in relation to what you think organizations should be thinking about. So as things are changing, you know, what should they think about uh, over the next one, two, three, four years, whatever, in their capability and how they, their tool capability still meets the needs of the organization so what does that does that make sense maybe I'll, I'll, if you could answer that tom it yeah? does so what, make sense it's um it's one of those that's you don't want to get crazy with complicated with, with kind of things haven't changed from forever it's always you're always just trying to deliver the best service with the kind of resources you have available and as long as your tools aren't holding you back because kind of all these new things are coming in but in reality, we're still following IT, we're still following mm -hmm. process that, um, that we all have followed for years. Um, so you want to make sure you're taking away the silos of data, because that is something that will hold you back if you've got data siloed everywhere. And you want to basically centralize everything and collaborate more. And that's where you get your efficiencies. And that's where the products that I know Prem was talking about earlier about ESM. And um, that's where these kind of, that's the collaboration comes in. That's something that everyone should be looking to do, because that, that does provide value. In terms of just um, still idle, we're still doing the same things. It's nothing different from what we were doing. Um, I know the frameworks evolve and move forward and things, but um, I'm not gonna <laughs> suggest that you go and change everything because of that, but you've got to go forward and it's got to make sure you're li eliminating those silos, making sure all your tools talk to, get, talk to each other and you're centralizing your departments. That's basically the key. Yeah. Thing. Same, same thing then, David, what, what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, same as Tom. No, no, no to, be, to, to be fair, I think Tom um, made a lot of very good points there. I mean, yeah, to answer this, the second bit, bit first, um, yeah, we certainly you know, look at customer trends. Um, so we look at our own customer base, we look at the wider market, try to make sure we keep on top of it. But I think Tom's right. And that kind of links to our pitch, really, you know, not just jumping on every single trend because a lot of them doesn't take off. And you know, that sometimes vendors will push a certain narrative that actually really won't necessarily make it into internal IT. A very quick example would be, you know, social media. I'm not talking about collaboration tools, but things like like Facebook, all that kind of good stuff. And, you know, there was noises made around that, but, you know, does someone actually want their personal Facebook integrating with talking to an internal IT team? Probably probably not. So I think my advice would be similar to Tom's in that, that we look at the market, we listen, but we, we we don't just jump on every trend. You know, we you know every vendor has a limited amount of resource, so we focus on the ones that we believe will give our customers the most benefit. Um, and, and in terms of advice, um, yeah, absolutely, uh, kind of endorse what's been said. Really, I think focus on the core essentials, which is part of our our our, our obviously pitch today. Um, but I think kind of consolidating, we're finding a lot of you know. A lot of times organizations buy point solutions for different departments and i think that's probably what's behind enterprise service management really isn't it you know you don't need different teams to go out and buy different products so we would certainly recommend that you if you've got a good service management tool it's always worth looking can it meet other requirements and other areas of business isn't it before you go out and buy something new um uh, and ITIL will continue to dominate, won't it? So that will always be an under uh, underpinning theme, which which we will follow. So that's that's my kind of key force, really. But I could talk for a lot longer. But uh, <laughs> that's much. Well, it's, it's a whole my... show, isn't it? It's a whole show. What's really interesting, I think, from 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 our listeners' perspective, is is because they see the brand, they see the tool, they don't see maybe some of the thinking behind it, unless they're really sort of deeply entrenched as as a, as a, a a user of the service, rather than seeing the the plethora of different options in other vendors and how other vendors think as well. It's, mm. it's, it's quite interesting. We've got, yeah, Naveed, uh, Naveed mentioned AI integration is the future factor coming into ICSM following on from automation. So that's a nice comment. I think it's, it's fair enough. Prem, your thoughts on that one then to close. All right. So <laughs> when it comes to innovation, uh, the major problem I have with my product managers uh, is that they go crazy at times. Right. So we try to keep them rationally insane. <laughs> Uh, you know, we want the voice of customers. We want to, you know, also bring in a lot of things. When we conceptualize the design, we uh, try to address everything, like designing a car. Uh, the concept versus the production is always there's a huge gap, right? So we uh, try to innovate 
And one of the key challenges that we have is, as Tom mentioned, right, we cannot address every trend, David as well, right? So uh, there may be uh, some things are fads and some things are you know, actually adding values to our customers. So to understand what is going to add value and what is not is a huge challenge, mm-hmm. right? So when it is in the design stage, we are crazy. But it, when it comes to production, we do a lot of analysis to you know uh, introduce what is going to really add value. And uh, 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 approach that we have taken in the recent days is to be a part of every tool chain possible. All right, so taking an integration approach, being a part of every tool chain that is focused on different verticals as well as different usage patterns and usage strategies. And uh, you know, for the next two, three years, we are not sure how the future of work is going to be. Are we going to work five days a week, three days a week, you know, four hours a day? Uh, are we going to encourage different types of uh, uh, hiring, you know, uh, employees and all that. So there are a lot of things that we have to worry about and change our service management strategy, uh, uh, which are going to be used in the different enterprises and build features that can support those strategies mm-hmm. is something that we are focusing on at this point in time. Mm-hmm. Good. And I think, it, again, coming back to that Teams and the integration stuff, you know, yes. um, uh, uh, Hornbill talk about destination application. And, and, and I think that that slowly sort of is becoming teams as a central fulcrum for everything else, I think, across the enterprise, yes. you know, and I, it's very, very interesting times. I, I don't think that would have happened before COVID. You know, it was, a, it was almost a novel thing, wasn't it? Using the, that kind of, uh, maybe if you want to develop it. But anyway, we could talk about that forever, guys. Thank you very much indeed. Um, th- that always goes so quickly. So thank you for your time and thank you for answering some of the questions. Thank you for uh, our listeners as well to answering them. And hopefully we'll get a chance um, to do this at some point live uh, in the near future, guys. Fingers crossed. In 3D rather than 2D. So until then, yeah, yeah. <laughs> until then, thank you. Appreciate it. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Cool. Thanks, Thanks, everyone. Thank you, David. Bye. Thank Bye. you, Tom and David. Bye. Cheers. Cheers. Thank you, guys. Bye. Good. Okay. Well, that, that pretty much wraps things up, I think. Um, yeah. There's one. One. Let me just before we close. Actually, let me see if I can get that slide up. This is. This is.